In an industry overrun with bloodsuckers, it's easy for films to get overlooked. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. I'm Kat Cressida, the voice of more than a few horrifically evil creatures myself. So I'm helping WatchMojo count down their picks for the top 10 lesser-known vampire movies. I'm afraid you must sup alone. It's nearly midnight. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at vampire films young and old that aren't the first flicks to come to mind, but remain a must-watch for any true fan of vampire cinema. We're not limiting our selection to critically acclaimed movies because, well, when it comes to supernatural cinema, the critics are rarely kind, and sometimes a cheesy flick is just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> Number 10, Kronos. Pues, no pasó nada. <laughs> An ancient mechanical scarab that gives you vampire-like abilities, the search for eternal life, and an ending that will leave you wanting more. In his very first feature film, Guillermo del Toro demonstrated why he'd eventually go down as one of the all-time greats of supernatural cinema. Now the heart. Following the character Jesus Gris, the feature sees del Toro spinning a story about an aging antique dealer who struggles to deal with the power of a vampire serum-inducing scarab, which gives him his youth at the expense of an inconvenient penchant for blood. Kronos is considered a strong balance of horror and drama, and has even been deemed one of the greatest horror films of all time. Conio se necesita para matarlo. Tu pierdes más que yo. Lo mío es nada más dolor. Number nine, blood for Dracula. The only thing to do left is to pack your personal belongings. I just wish to take some books. In this bizarre but admittedly interesting Italian-French take on Dracula, we see a weakened count on the move from Transylvania to Italy in search of new blood. What good is it to have tea if I can't find the right vegetable to go with it? Of course, not just any blood will do. He's searching for some oh-so-coveted virgin blood. After years of feasting in Transylvania, he and his now decimated family have run out of food. They killed all the rich people, took everything they had, and then killed them. You won't even have this crummy house when it happens here. The film is infused with more than its fair share of Marxist commentary via the main antagonist, Mario, as he aggressively tries to stop Dracula by any means necessary, including raping a young woman. Like we said, it's odd, but unlike any vampire flick you've seen before. You cannot have me a fool. I am not one of you. Number eight. Vampire Hunter D. But first, in so much as she's failed to deliver herself to his table, the lowly human must be punished. Leave it to the ever-inspired anime industry to produce one of the most exciting vampire stories ever put to film. Although not as visually stunning as its sequel, Bloodlust, this beautiful, action-packed film showed incredible depth. I've heard rumors about a mutant who can warp the fabric of time and space. Would that be you? The story takes place in a very distant future a post-nuclear war world where vampires, known as the nobility, rebuilt civilization, keeping humans around as the inferior race. Add to that werewolves, demons, and other such malevolent creatures, and this isn't exactly a world you'd want to live in. That is, unless you're a vampire hunter called D. <laughs> You'll wish you were as cool as this sword-wielding half-vampire, even with his strange talking hand. Yeah. Number 7. A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night <sighs> The first female-led vampire flick on our list, this black-and-white film takes an artistic approach to its subject matter and delivers a fascinating twist on the vampire genre. Based in an Iranian town known as Bad City, the film follows a woman known simply as The Girl, who walks the streets late at night. By all accounts, she's a normal young woman who loves listening to music and dancing in her apartment. But she also has a secret. The fact that she's a vampire and a specific agenda, which is to rid the city of all she deems evil. A morally complex and beautifully shot film, it has received rave reviews. 
Number six, Shadows of the Vampire. Very well, let's get the film to the lab immediately. I'll need to see rushes tomorrow before the train in the morning. Sure, this film is pretty straightforward at a glance. A movie about people trying to make the perfect vampire movie. Your finger! Look! The film follows director F.W. Murnau as he attempts to create his legendary masterpiece, Nosferatu. Except in this iteration, the vampire scenes are all too real. He casts no reflection. Come down, come down, Greg. In a cruel and somewhat humorous twist, it seems the director left the cast and crew out to dry, as he utilized the talents of the relatively unknown method actor Max Schreck, who is in fact a real vampire. Talk about really immersing yourself in a role. You take the sun, Alvin. Could you quickly collect the wooden stake and return it to its rightful place? It is necessary for the final frame. Number five, Near Dark. Have a bite? Bite? Just dying for a cone. Before Catherine Bigelow became the award-winning director she is today, she directed this thrilling Western-style vampire flick. What is going on? Hey, what's going on, son? It's what's coming off. When Caleb Colton unwittingly becomes involved with a rogue vampire named May, his life soon spirals out of control. Turned into a vampire and forced to adjust to his new blood-sucking lifestyle, Caleb struggles to get back to his family and his normal life. By all accounts, the film was a box office flop, but it became an instant cult classic, with some arguing that it helped rejuvenate the idea of serious vampire movies. <laughs> I'll drink to that. You're the old man. Leave him alone, Jess. Number four, Martin. <laughs> Gruesome, terrifying, and deranged, this horror film delivered everything we love about director George A. Romero. I just have a sickness. The only way I can survive is by drinking blood. Martin, the titular character, has become so delusional that he actually believes he's an 84-year-old blood-sucking vampire. After the young man moves in with his overly Catholic granduncle, all hell breaks loose in the small town of Braddock, Pennsylvania. But what makes Martin such a terrifying film is its realism. Armed with a syringe full of narcotics, razor blades, and an unhealthy lust for blood, the deranged but iconic lead character will make you think twice about exchanging pleasantries with strangers. I want to stay alive. I do need blood. Number three, thirst. A fantastic piece of Korean cinema, this film provides a fresh take on one of the major themes in most vampire stories, love. But of course, it's never really that simple when it comes to love. Is it? After Catholic priest Sang Hyun miraculously recovers from an incurable disease, he begins to develop vampire-like symptoms. Armed with a new sense of vitality, but unable to resist his inner urges, the cursed priest soon develops strong feelings for his close friend's wife. <laughs> While this dysfunctional love triangle takes up most of the movie, it's Sang Hyun's inner struggle to deal with his newfound bloodlust that steals the show. Number 2. Nosferatu the Vampire It's still many hours before dawn. And during the daytime, I am always away. Remakes of already beloved films are often doomed from the start. But this stylistic retelling of the unforgettable classic Nosferatu stands apart by delving deep into the loneliness that comes from being immortal. A new imagine, enduring centuries. Director Werner Herzog maintains the narrative of death and despair that comes with being Count Dracula, but also manages to humanize the tragic character. When an unsuspecting estate agent comes to visit the Count, who's looking to move to Wismar, Germany, the agent's life is derailed when Dracula becomes infatuated with his wife. With a surprise twist ending that keeps the tale alive, this film carves an interesting space out for itself in the Dracula lore. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Skin double, silver, shiny, 
just like a mirror. You see your face in it. My mother lives on human blood and has done for two centuries. There is a code that we survive by, Helena. Keep it. Number one. Let the right one in. You can't be friends with me. Just so you know. The best vampire movies are based in Sweden, right? Well, this Scandinavian film, based on a book of the same name, certainly hits all the right notes, blending romance and horror to become an instant classic. Oscar, take you on me. Deviating from the book, however, in this iteration, director Tomas Alfredson chose to focus more on the strange relationship between the main characters, Oscar and Eli, rather than all of the violence. While Oscar, a 12-year-old boy, tries to navigate a difficult bullying situation, he develops a strong bond with his new neighbor Eli, unaware that she's a vampire. The film really comes together with stellar performances by both child actors, who are more than enough to keep audiences entranced, later spawning an American remake. Well, that's our sinfully sweet list of lesser-known vampire movies. Are any of these your favorite? If you think we've left off a few worth a mention, feel free to shout out your comments below. And if you happen to be craving a daily dose of video game, voiceover, or Disney trivia, hope you'll follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Kat Cressida. But more importantly, for your daily fix of more fiendishly delish top 10 videos published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.